Hey there, welcome to this SketchUp 101 course on YouTube where I'm going to be teaching you the basics of SketchUp. We're going to be using the latest version which is SketchUp 2021. I'm going to be running through the entire basic modeling tools, the user interface and a whole lot more. Now this is part of a larger course which you would find in the description of this video which is called Learn Interior Design with SketchUp and V-Ray and you will learn how to design, model and render high quality photorealistic interior renderings. So do check it out in the link below. Now before I go ahead, please subscribe and like this channel. It would encourage me to create even more videos which would definitely help y'all. Now without further ado, let's jump straight to the video and learn more about SketchUp. See you guys in the video inside. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome to the first video of our course where we're going to learn how to install SketchUp. So you can open the resource Google Sheet which contains all the links and files for this course and to start off you can click on this link which will head to the sketchup main website to download your sketchup file now if you're not a student and you just want to try out sketchup the easiest way is to simply select for professional projects which is as default and click on start free trial you could also go to for personal projects and select the sketchup 30 day trial here or you can also use the sketchup free web only version and follow this course as well but in my case, I'm going to use four professional projects and click on start my free trial. And now I'm going to log in with my Google email ID. If you're on Apple, you can sign in with your Apple email ID as well. So sign in with your Google account. The screen which you're seeing is in German because I'm in the process of learning German. Ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch, aber nicht so viel. Trotzdem versuche ich. For those who don't understand German, please ignore and go forward. Alright, so once you've logged in, you'll need to fill in SketchUp survey so that they get to understand your industry and where you work in. So fill in the required details. In our case, it's going to be interior design. So I'm going to select interior design. And now I'm going to select what I'm interested in. You can now fill in your company details. MPS Architects is my architecture firm here in Bangalore, India. Put in your other details. Click on I agree. And finally, click on start my trial. So now SketchUp would automatically download to your system and you can open it up to start installing SketchUp in your PC. So once it's downloaded to your system, we can start the installation process. So open the .exe file or the .dmg file if you're using a Mac. Select the language of your choice. In my case, it's English and it's going to be United States. Click on next and now choose the location where you want to install your sketchup file so make a folder called sketchup 2021 and then click on install again and now it would start installing the sketchup software into your system all right sketchup has been installed and now you can click on finish to finish the installation so once sketchup is installed it comes with two other softwares which is layout and style builder we're going to be using layout later in the main course for now let's open sketchup pro 2021 so once you open SketchUp for the first time, you would need to accept their license agreement. So click on I agree and click on accept. And these days, since SketchUp is a subscription software and you need to pay up every year to continue using SketchUp, you would need to sign in with the same email ID which you use to register for your 30 day trial. So I'm going to click on sign in and log in with the same Google ID that I used. And that's it. So you signed in to all things SketchUp. And to get started, you can click on start trial to start your 30 day trial lessons. So in the next video, we're going to start using SketchUp and we're going to be talking about templates. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome to the first video on this course. So to get started, we need to open SketchUp once we've installed SketchUp. And also a heads up, we'll be using the Windows version of SketchUp in this course. Although I'm also going to be showing you the Mac versions for certain functions in SketchUp. So to get started, let's open SketchUp Pro 2021. So generally, once you install, you'll find the icon in your desktop. So you can double click to open it up. And once it opens, you may need to register your email ID in case you're opening it for the first time and then log in with that email ID, which is what you used to download and install SketchUp. And once you've registered, you can start your 30 day trial license. So once you've done all of that, it's time to select our template. 
Now you can see that SketchUp comes with a lot of templates. Now if you want to see additional templates, you can click on more templates and you can see the other templates out here. So each of these templates have different kinds of background colors, starting views, units of measurements, tags, and a lot more. It's also got a scaled 2D figure. In this case, it is Sumele. And here's a fun fact. So every year they publish a new 2D figure and those 2D figures are actually employees working in the SketchUp office. So they're actual people and they have themselves represented in the software. Now, if you want to change the default template in SketchUp, you can change it by clicking on this heart symbol here. So it changes the default template. And the next time, now for example, if I open this, and the next time you open SketchUp or you click on File New, it's going to load in with the metric units. Now, if you want to change the default units, simply go to Help and click on Welcome to SketchUp. And then you can change the default units again. So in our case, we're going to use the simple inches or you can also use the architectural inches. It's pretty much the same. So we are going to use simple inches. So once you selected your template, just click on the box here and it would open the template. Now, if you want to change the units after you select a template, which I would not recommend is you go to windows, click on model info, and then you click on units and you can change the template here as well. But I would suggest that you change the template right off the bat before starting any project. And for this course, you're going to be using the simple inches units. And for all those who work with metric, do not worry because I will be translating the units every time I get a chance. And I'm also going to show you something in SketchUp, which is really cool, where you can use both the metric and the imperial units while modeling in SketchUp. I'm also going to get rid of these plugins for now because we don't really need them for the basics course I will be using them in the main course so the next video I'm going to introduce you to the SketchUp interface and talk brief about the interface so I'll see you guys in the next video cheers hey guys welcome back to yet another video now we're going to start off by using our simple inches template so click on the simple inches template to start off now to all the Mac users out there, feel free to skip this video and head to the next one where I will be showing how to use SketchUp in Mac. It's a little different compared to the Windows version, actually a lot more different, but do not worry, I will be showing you what the main differences are in the Mac version in the next video. So like any other software out there, you're going to find SketchUp super simple to use. We have the main menu bar or the menu toolbar on top here, then we have the modeling tools, the viewport the default tray and then at the bottom we have on the bottom left are hints which gives us an idea of every tool and on the bottom right are measurements. So let's look at each of them one at a time. So starting off is the menu toolbar. So as you can see we have the file toolbar where you can save stuff, open models and then you can also print, save as images, export a 2D drawing among many other options. I will be showing it to you later on the course. Then we have the edit option where you can copy paste like any other software, control C, control V, a universal function, which is now part of almost every other software. And then we have view where you get to show different kinds of toolbars. So if I go to view toolbars, I can switch on all of these and it would show up on the top here. I'm going to leave it off for now. I'm just going to keep it simple. Then we have camera, draw and tools, which is basically the various functions in SketchUp. I will not be using these drop down menus as much because I will be using shortcuts instead. And I will show you how to use shortcuts to model faster and efficiently. So we will come back to this at a later stage. Finally, we have windows and this is a super important drop down menu because it's going to be a little different from the Mac version. Now this windows drop down menu, you can go to default tray and activate the default tray here. If it doesn't show up, you go to windows default ray show tray and this is our default ray here now this is where you get to add materials add tags which is also known as layers also we can activate shadows as you can see and it's also got few more cool options so we will be going in depth on the default ray later in the main course for now is just to give you an idea of what you would be able to do with the default ray now for the Mac users, you'll find that you won't get this default tray like this on the right. You'll generally get it as different windows. 
and I will show it to you soon. Now, if you want to add or remove stuff to the default tray, you can go to Windows, Default tray, and add any of these. I generally keep the outliner on because I use it for my SketchUp to Unreal Engine workflow. So I'm going to keep that on, and the rest of it is default. So make sure you take a screenshot of this and make sure it's the same. If it doesn't show up, you can just go to Windows, Default tray, and make sure all of these are ticked on. Now, when you're not using the default tray, you can click on the auto hide button and it would be hidden on the right here. And if you want to pin it, you can simply click on the pin button again and it would be pinned to the right. Finally, we have the extensions drop down menu. Now, this menu comes after you install a couple of plugins in SketchUp. As you can see, I have the V-Ray plugin installed, Sketch UV, Slicer, among many others. We will be using this again in the main course. Finally, you have help. And like I said before in the previous video, if you want to change your units, default units, that is, when you start SketchUp, you can go to help, Windows, welcome to SketchUp, and then change the units here. All right, then we have our modeling tools here, the bottom, which has the basic modeling tools from select tool, eraser, line, arc, move, push, among many others. We will jump to that shortly in the coming few videos. Now, the bottom left is something important where it gives you a hint of what each tool is capable and which tool you're using. Now, for example, if we click on the eraser tool, you can see that it gives a hint showing that you can erase, soften or smooth entities in the model. And now when I hover over the viewport, the hint again changes where it says select items to erase or drag across multiple items. So it's a very pretty useful dialog box. I generally don't check it out that often because I know SketchUp, but for beginners, it comes in really handy. And finally, on the bottom right, we have our measurements. Now, this is something which you might want to get right from the start, is that you don't really need to click here, and generally nothing happens even if you click here, because SketchUp reads whatever value you type directly into the measurement box. You don't really need to click and press enter. Now, for example, I'm drawing a rectangle. You don't have to do the same. I'm going to type in 1 feet, comma 5 feet, and enter. I didn't really need to click here. I simply needed to type in my measurements simply and then press enter. That's all you need to do. I will be reiterating this later on the course as well so that it enters your head and you don't make the mistake of clicking the measurement box. So you just simply type the value and press enter. So that's a brief on the SketchUp user interface. In the next video, I will be showing a brief on the SketchUp user interface in Mac. So for the Windows users, you, you can skip the video after that, which is an introduction to the basic SketchUp tools. Also guys, there's no exercise files for this because it's simple, right? You don't really need something. I'm going to make it in the canvas or in the viewport and you can make your own shapes and whatever you like. So see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now this video is for all the Mac users out there and we're going to be showing you how to use SketchUp for Mac. So once you double click on the SketchUp icon, this dialog box will open and then you can select your template, which in our case is SketchUp inches. So once you open SketchUp, this is our main dialog box, which contains the viewport. I'm going to maximize this window by clicking on the green button here, which would enter into full screen. And the SketchUp for Mac is similar in certain respects to SketchUp for Windows as well, since we have the top menu bar and our drawing toolbar here, and then the main viewport. And in the bottom left, we have a hint text, which indicates what each of the tool does. So it basically gives you a hint. And in the bottom right, we have a measurements box. All right, so the main difference between SketchUp for Mac and Windows is that your preferences are found under the SketchUp dropdown menu. So if you click on SketchUp, you'll find the preferences here. Whereas SketchUp for Windows, you'll generally find the preferences option under the Windows drop-down menu. So that is pretty much the main difference. And the other main difference which you're going to see between Mac and Windows for SketchUp is that we have something called the default tray on the right and it doesn't show up in Mac. Now in the Mac version of SketchUp, you generally need to add in the dialog boxes in the default tray one by one. So I'm going to click on Entity Info to add it in. And it shows up here on the right as a dialog box. And if you click on the top, it would minimize into a single rectangular bar. You can also drag it and dock it to the right like this. So I'm going to go ahead and add in more windows, which would be similar to the default tray in the SketchUp for Windows version. So you can activate each of them from the Windows drop-down menu. 
and dock it to the bottom of the list like this. And once you dock it like this, you can move the entire so-called default tray wherever you like. I generally dock it to the right. So I'm going to switch them on one by one. We're going to keep styles as well. Minimize and dock it to the right like that. And I'm also going to do it for tags and rest of the main windows for our so-called default tree. All right, that's good enough. And we also have another window box, which is materials, but you can't really dock it along with the rest of the windows on top. So the materials window is only one which is separate and you can also activate it by pressing B on your keyboard, which activates the bucket tool and the material dialog box as well. All right, and now I'm going to explain the various drop-down menus in SketchUp for Mac. So the file drop-down menu is similar to most of the programs where you can save, open files, make a new file, export, print, and more. Edit is where you have the universal copy, paste, paste in place, delete guides, and some more useful functions. The review drop-down menu is where you can switch on various toolbars. So generally on the left, if you've seen some other tutorials, you'll find a large toolset bar. So to activate that, go to tool palette and click on large toolset. So that would activate the large toolset bar here like this. So you could either keep the large toolset bar or you could also keep the top general drawing toolbar. Now to be less redundant, since it's the same tools, I'm going to just keep the top toolbar. And if you'd like to hide the top toolbar instead, you can go to view and click on hide toolbar but in my case i'm going to do the reverse where i'm going to hide the large toolset bar and only keep the top toolbar all right so now we have draw camera and tools and i don't generally use these drop down menus because i use shortcuts instead and it makes my life much more easy because i get to model faster rather than coming here each time to activate a certain tool or function and i would highly encourage you guys to do the same as that so the draw drop down menu generally contains the drawing tools like making a line, rectangle, shapes and more. The camera is where you can switch between perspective, parallel projection and two point perspective. And you can also set in certain standard views for your elevations and plans. Tools is where you get to have the main functions, which is select, move, rotate, scale, push, pull and more. Like I mentioned before, I would highly recommend you guys to use shortcuts rather than coming to this drop down menu and selecting each of these functions. So try to get in the habit of using shortcuts and we will be sharing those shortcuts in the coming few videos. Then we have the ever so important Windows drop down menu, which is a little different from the SketchUp for Windows version. And you need to switch on each of these dialog boxes one by one to make your default tray on the right as shown. Finally, we have extensions, which contains all your additional plugins in SketchUp. And in our case, we have V-Ray installed. And in case you install other plugins like Flex Tools, Sketch UV, Scatter, Skimp or more, it would show up under extensions. Now, this is our main drawing toolbar. And if you want to add to this toolbar, you can go to view and click on customize toolbar. And now you can start dragging any of these icons into your toolbar on top. And this dialog box generally contains all the icons or functions from your SketchUp and also your plugins. And once you're done adding those icons, you can click on done. For now, we'll just leave the default. This is our main viewport where you do the modeling. And this is Sumele, who is apparently an employee in SketchUp. And every year when they release a new 2D figure, it is actually representing someone who works at Trimble SketchUp. On the bottom left, as mentioned before, is our hint box. So for example, if I click on the eraser tool, you can see that the hint box changes to denote what the eraser tool does, which is select items to erase or drag across multiple items. And it gives you the appropriate hints during the start of the function, mid action, and after you've done applying a function or tool. On the bottom right, we have our measurements box. Now it's super important for you to not click on the measurement box and type in your value because it doesn't work. So you simply need to type in your value. So for example, if I'm making a rectangle with a certain dimension, I'm going to press R on my keyboard, click once, and then I'm going to type in my value, which is 10 feet, comma 20 feet, and then simply press enter. So you notice that I did not really need to click on the bottom right. I can simply just type in the value and press enter and SketchUp would automatically read those values. 
and then outputs your rectangle to that size. So that was a very quick tutorial into SketchUp for Mac. If you have any certain doubts or more, feel free to ask away in the discussion box below this video. I hope you guys found this video useful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Alright, so before we jump into the tools in SketchUp, it's super important to know how to navigate in SketchUp because it's either going to make you or break you if you don't know how to navigate in SketchUp. It's actually pretty simple and similar to other 3D modeling softwares, maybe a little different. So you have the left click, the right click and the middle mouse button. So what the middle mouse button does is that you get to orbit. As you can see, I can orbit in the viewport. And now with the middle mouse button pressed, I'm going to press the shift key on the keyboard. As you can see, when I press shift, it changes to the hand or the pan tool. And now I can pan in SketchUp as well. So get used to orbiting and also panning together. This helps when you are modeling in SketchUp. And then we have a left click and right click. So left click is to select stuff in SketchUp and then right click is to find out the various options that you have for that selection. And then we also have the selection boxes. So now if you select from left to right, so whatever is within this black box is going to get selected. And if I drag from right to left, now whatever comes in the path of this box will get selected. Now you can see that Sumile's hand is at the edge of this box. And now if I leave it, you can see that Sumile gets selected. But if I drag a bounding box and if it's not covering the entire asset or group, it's not going to get selected. So get used to this as well, where left to right is where whatever comes within the box gets selected. And right to left is whatever comes within the path of this dashed box gets selected. And finally, we have the zoom. So if I scroll with my middle mouse button, I can zoom. And I can zoom wherever I want in the viewport. We also have something called a magnifying glass or a zoom tool here. Problem with this is that if I zoom in, it would zoom in only in the center of the screen and not anywhere else. So I generally use the middle mouse button. Finally, if you want to select multiple items in SketchUp, you can use the control and control shift buttons on your keyboard. Now to demonstrate that I'm going to make a copy of Sumele using the move tool and pressing control on my keyboard, clicking once, clicking twice and typing in X10 enter. Don't worry if you couldn't follow that. I will be explaining that in the coming few videos. Right, so now if you want to select all of these, you can of course drag select and make a box around the objects. So that would select everything or even from the right to left as well. Now let's say you selected everything and you want to deselect the alternate ones. So now if I hold control, you can see the plus button on my select tool. And if I hold control shift, it changes to minus. So now I can click on the items which I want to deselect and it would deselect those items. Now, if I release the shift button from my keyboard, it goes back to the plus button and then I can select back those items. So control is to add stuff to the selection and control shift is to deselect stuff from the selection. So that was a quick video into navigating in SketchUp and also selecting stuff. In the next video, we're going to use our modeling tools and finally start creating something awesome in SketchUp. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you the most important tool in SketchUp, which is the select tool. So to activate the select tool, you can go here and click on the select tool here, or you can press the space bar on your keyboard. So the select tool helps you select stuff in SketchUp, which is pretty obvious since it's called the select tool. So for example, if I zoom in, I can select the face by clicking once, or I can select the edges as well by selecting the edge of the box. Now if I double click on a face, it would select the face. As you can see, it's become dotted here. And the blue line, which is the border of the face. So that is double click. Now what happens if I triple click? So if I triple click, it selects all the connected faces, lines and edges. So if you want to select the entirety of a model, you need to triple click to select stuff.
all right now if you want to make a drag selection or a box selection you can drag from left to right so i'm holding the mouse button and dragging from the left to the right now what is going to come within this selection box is going to get selected so you can see that these faces only got selected as these were not in that selection box but if i drag and envelope the entire box the entire box would get selected so that's left to right now if i drag from right to left you can see that it turns to a dashed line this means that whatever is going to come in the path of this dashed line selection so i'm going to leave it here you can see that this face gets selected and all these edges get selected as well this face as well so that just means that anything which is going to come within the path of this dash box is going to get selected you can see that this line didn't get selected because that didn't come in the path of that dash box now to explain that better let's say i want to select only this face so i'm going to drag from left to right so you can see that it would select this face since it came within that box since i dragged it from left to right if i drag it from right to left it's going to select all of these faces as well so i hope that made sense and another useful function of the select tool is when you're switching between various commands in sketchup so what i generally do is if i want to push a certain face i would select this face and then click the push tool and then push it up now before going to the next tool i would press the space bar to activate the select tool and then select the next icon or next function in sketchup so in this case it's move so it's always a good idea to switch between tools by using the select tool command now before we go ahead i'm also going to show you how to access the large toolset bar which generally shows up here on the left so you can go to view click on toolbars and then if you scroll down you get an option called large toolset bar so you can either use the large toolset bar or you can use the getting started menu bar on top as well so you guys can select which one you want do not keep both of them since it would be redundant to have the same tools in different menu bars so you can either keep large toolset bar or the getting started bar for this course i'm going to keep the getting started bar and i'm going to use shortcuts a lot to model in sketchup so that was a quick tutorial into the select tool in the next few videos we're going to learn the other tools and then create boxes like these furniture and a lot more so see you guys in the next video cheers all right so we're going to jump into the modeling part now before i do that i'm just going to quickly run through the axis lines in sketchup so we have the blue axis the green axis and the red axis now before i explain any of these axis lines i just want to point out and i want you to keep this in mind is that the green axis is always pointed to the true north in sketchup which means if i switch on the shadows here now you can see that this is the north this is south and this is the east and west so the time is 1:40 and this is the month which denotes that it's summer in mid october now if i change this to morning you can see that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west so that's something which i want you to keep in mind going forward because we're going to be using it a lot in the vra part of the course as well so the green axis is pointed towards the north the red axis obviously towards the east and the blue axis is towards space or it's also known as the z axis which is pointing towards something unknown all right and we use axes a lot when it comes to modeling in sketchup so let's start modeling and the first tool which we're going to learn is the line tool now click the line tool to activate the line tool or you can press l on your keyboard l is the shortcut for line so if you click once on the viewport you can see that you can start drawing your line now a lot of students make the mistake of i'm going to press escape to get out of the line command so a lot of the students make the mistake of clicking and then dragging and not releasing the left mouse button so that's a mistake in sketchup which you need to avoid you simply need to click on the viewport release your hand from the left click and then move around in sketchup now you can see that it snaps whenever i move towards the red axis so it snaps to the red axis so i'm just going to click here and then again if i want to 
move it along the green axis, I can move it towards the green axis. Now, since my viewport is oriented in such a way that if I move this way, it will get snapped to the Z axis. That's not what I want. So I'm just going to orbit to the right a bit and then draw my line to the green axis. Then finally back. Now, if you want to infer to this point, all you need to do is go back on the red axis and it would automatically snap or infer to this point. Now, if it doesn't infer, what you can do is just go to this endpoint and then simply drag it out slowly and then it will infer as well. So click there. And finally, we need to close this and we have our face. So now before I go ahead, I just want to explain faces and edges in SketchUp. So these are the edges that we just drew with our line command. And this is the face. Now an enclosed edge will create a face, as you can see. And also something super important to know is reversed faces in SketchUp. So we have a white face at the bottom and our sort of a blue face at the top. This is a reverse face. And when it comes to V-Ray modeling or rendering, you should always apply material on the white face of SketchUp. We're going to be showing that later on the course as well. So do not worry too much about it. But I'm just going to keep you updated so that you don't make the mistake of applying materials on the wrong face. But for now, just forget about that. We will dive deep into applying materials in the V-Ray part of the main course. I'm going to show you how to create the same box, but this time with some measurements. So I'm going to click on the line tool again. And I'm also going to show you how to lock your axis when drawing lines. So activate the line tool by clicking here or by pressing the L key on your keyboard. I would suggest that you start getting into the habit of using shortcuts because we use shortcuts a lot in SketchUp. Now click once to start drawing a line. Remember, do not click and hold. Click and release your left mouse button. Now drag it to the red axis. Now, for example, if your line is not snapping to the red axis and you want to snap it, all you need to do is press the right arrow key on your keyboard and it would snap to the red axis. Now, even if I go anywhere else on the viewport, it doesn't change. It's locked to that red axis. So once it's locked to the red axis, you can give a measurement. Now, like I mentioned before, you do not have to go to the measurement box here on the corner and click here. You do, you do not have to do that because it doesn't work. All you need to do is just type in your value. So I'm going to type in 10 apostrophe to denote that it is in feet and then press enter. So that's 10 feet. Now I'm going to drag my line to the green axis and to lock it to the green axis, I'm going to press the left arrow key. So now it's locked to the green axis. And now I'm going to press 5 and press enter. So now you can see that since I did not give the right unit, the apostrophe, it read in inches. So SketchUp generally reads mostly in inches. So without clicking anywhere else, now I can overwrite this value which I just gave. So with the green axis snapped or the left arrow key, whatever it is, I'm going to type in the value again, five feet and then press enter. So it just overwrites the previous value and then takes in the new value. And now we have the correct measurement. You can also type in in meters, which is something really cool in SketchUp. And you can't really do this in 3ds Max or the other 3D modeling applications. Now, for example, I want to type in 1500 mm. I can just type in 1500 and then type in mm. Press enter. And boom, we have a 1500 mm line. And then finally, to close this, I can just click on the end point here. So click on the select tool again to activate the spacebar tool and deactivate the line tool. And now we have our shape. So I want you to practice what I just taught you, which is using the line tool, locking it to the red axis, clicking once, locking it to the green axis, clicking again, again, locking it to the red axis, inferring it to the first point, and then going back to draw your shape. You can also use the measurements by simply typing in your value and get used to using the line tool in SketchUp. Now let's say you made a mistake and you want to go back and you know how to do that is simply by using the undo command which is Control Z and you can see that last line gets deleted. So the Control Z and redo is pretty useful in SketchUp. In case you make mistakes, all you need to do is go to edit and click on undo draw line or you can press Control Z. 
The other shortcut is Alt and Backspace, which I don't use, is generally Control C. So in the next video, we're gonna learn how to use the rectangle tool and make these shapes faster. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the rectangle tool and also how to use it right. So the rectangle tool is most often used compared to the line tool. And to activate the rectangle tool, all you need to do is go to your main toolbar and click on the rectangle tool. The shortcut for the rectangle tool is R. So you can either press R or you can click on the tool here. Like I mentioned before, make sure to always use shortcuts because that would definitely increase your speed and workflow. So to use the rectangle tool, you can click once. And like I mentioned before, do not drag after clicking, simply click once and release the left click mouse button. And now if you click the second time, it's gonna make your rectangle. So that's how simple it is to make your rectangle. Now if you wanna give a particular dimension to the rectangle, what you need to do is, I'm gonna press the space bar to select my select tool. And now I'm gonna click on the rectangle tool again. Also if you've noticed, I always switch between the select tool and then the main tool. So in SketchUp, it's super important to always keep using the select tool and then switch between your other tools. All right, so press R to activate the rectangle tool and now click once, release the left click mouse button. And now I'm gonna give a dimension for this rectangle. Now it's super simple to give a dimension for rectangles in SketchUp. First, you need to type in the width. So it's gonna be 10 feet. And then you need to press comma on your keyboard without pressing enter or any other key. And then type in the second value, which is gonna be 20 feet. And this is gonna be our depth. Now you can see in the bottom right corner that I've typed in 10 feet or 10 apostrophe comma 20 apostrophe and then press enter. So boom, we made our rectangle, which is 10 feet by 20 feet. Now let's say for example, you wanna draw a rectangle on the green axis or on 3D. So what you need to do is, again, activate the rectangle tool by pressing R on your keyboard. Now click once, and if you wanna draw in another plane or in the XY plane or XYZ plane, I'm not sure which plane it is, you simply need to press the right arrow key on your keyboard. So it snaps to that plane, and you can then give a different dimension. So I'm gonna give 10 feet, comma 15 feet and then press enter. Similarly, if I want to draw a rectangle on the green axis or on the red axis, I press the left arrow key and it snaps to this plane and now I can give another value, say 25 feet, comma 15 feet. So that's how simple it is to make it in different planes as well. And finally, if you want to snap it to the plan view or which is the XY plane, the main plane in SketchUp, it's a good idea to snap it by pressing the top arrow key. So this way it would not snap to any other object. Now say for example, if I'm drawing a rectangle this way, you can see that if I hover over this point, it gets snapped to this edge. So to avoid that, I press the top arrow key and now it's always snapped to this plane. So now I'm gonna give a value say 20 feet, comma 31 feet and press enter. So that's how simple it is to create rectangles in SketchUp. In the next video, we'll be using the offset tool and then give some thickness to our rectangles and then make our walls. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now in this video, we're gonna learn how to create a wall thickness using our offset tool. The offset tool is in your main toolbar again. You can click here to activate the offset tool or you can press F on your keyboard. So once you press F, it would activate the offset tool and now you can hover over any face and it would highlight that face, which means you can offset this face. Click once, make sure to not click and drag, simply click and release your hand from the left mouse button. And now you can give a thickness either inside or outside the box. If you want to give a thickness of 6 inches, you can type in 6 and then press enter. So that would give it a thickness of 6 inches outside the box. Now, 
I would suggest that you select the face first and then press the offset tool, which is F on your keyboard. The reason being because there would be a case where there are multiple faces and if you go ahead and simply use the offset tool, you might not offset the right face. So it's a good idea to select the face using your select tool and then pressing F on your keyboard to activate the offset tool. Give a thickness of 8 inches, press enter and you are done. Again to reiterate, when you're giving the offset, make sure not to click on the measurements box on the right. Simply just give your value, say 10 inches and then press enter. That's all you need to do. You do not really need to click here and then give the measurement because it doesn't work. You simply need to type in your value and SketchUp would automatically read that. So this is a quick tutorial into the offset tool. And now in the next tutorial, we'll learn more about the eraser tool. And then we'll create some abstract art, 2D art on our SketchUp window. We're not going to get into 3D yet. We're still trying out the 2D modeling tools. And then we'll slowly get into the 3D as well. So go ahead and practice the offset tool. It's a very simple tool to use. Also notice that I'm still in the offset tool. So make sure to get into the habit of using the select tool by pressing spacebar on your keyboard. So that's about it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to learn how to use the eraser tool. So to activate the eraser tool, you can click here on this eraser. Or you can press E on your keyboard to activate the eraser tool. So get into the habit of using shortcuts again. Use E for eraser, F for offset, and spacebar for the spacebar tool. Of course, you have rectangle as well, which is R, and finally line tool, which is L. So don't forget those shortcuts. You would find it in the PDF as well. Do get in the habit, and you will see your SketchUp modeling workflow get faster and faster. All right, so once you activate the eraser tool, you can start deleting stuff in your canvas in the viewport. All you need to do is click and drag. So only for this tool, you need to click and drag in SketchUp. The other tools, you don't really need to click and drag. So you can simply click and drag to delete the lines and faces. Now, there's another way to delete stuff in SketchUp, and that is by using the Select tool. So press space bar. You can simply select the face on SketchUp and click on Delete here as well. Now, for example, if I want to delete this, I'm going to make a box selection from right to left to select those two edges and the face and press Delete. So now I'm going to press Undo because I don't want to really delete them. But that is just to show you how to delete stuff in SketchUp. Now, let's say you're deleting stuff and you accidentally deleted these two lines. That's not what you wanted. So all you need to do is press escape when you are still holding the eraser button and it will just get out of the command. So if I'm deleting by pressing the left click and not releasing and if I press the escape key, you can see that I go out of the command and I don't delete the stuff. So one last time, if you want to delete stuff using the eraser tool, left click, drag and then release your left key. So you can delete stuff in SketchUp. In the next video, we'll learn how to use materials and start painting and stuff in SketchUp. You can also go ahead and create multiple shapes and sizes so that we have a canvas and then we can paint on top of this. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now in this video, we're going to learn to use the materials window from our default tray. So you'll find the materials window in your default tray. Now if your default tray is not shown, you can go to windows default tray and click on show tray. Mine is shown here. So this is our materials window. And here you have the actual materials. So if you click on the home button, you can see that these are the various materials. And these materials actually belong to Sumele. So this is her materials. So by clicking the home button, it simply shows you the various materials that are part of your scene. And in this case, we have Sumele's materials, which are part of our scene. Now, SketchUp comes preloaded with a set of materials. So if I click on the drop down box here, it comes with various kinds of materials for various categories. Let's go to colors first. So click on colors. And now if I select any color, it changes to this bucket tool, which is 
P on your keyboard, the shortcut for paint bucket. And now you can start painting in stuff in SketchUp. So I can use random colors and then paint in some abstract art. So I would suggest that you guys also try out and create something cool on SketchUp. Just some 2D for now. We're going to create 3D later. And we also have some other materials which you can check out. We have the glass material and then we have metal, landscape and so on. I personally do not use the SketchUp materials window a lot because I'm a V-Ray user and I create V-Ray materials instead. But this is a great base for you to start. And if you're only showing 2D views and elevations to your client, then this would definitely help you out in designing your space. All right, so we have various materials. I'm just going to finally just fill this up. You also have wood. If you want to show some wood in your scene. And we also have some roofing materials as well. Now these are great to export SketchUp images like I mentioned before. But if you're a V-Ray user, there's a different workflow to materials and I'm going to show you that in the V-Ray part of the main course. You can also edit the materials if you want. Now if I click on edit, now this is the material that we're going to edit, which is roofing shingles, thing which is this. You can change the color if you like. You can also match the color on the screen if you like. And you can also reduce the opacity. So you can play around with these options. Now the most important parameter in the material dialog box is the size parameter because I use it in parallel with SketchUp. Now for example, I want to increase or decrease the scale of this texture. So I need to select this material first. So you go to select. And then we have something called the sample paint. So click on sample paint, select this material, and then go to edit and change the size here. Now say, let's say I want to make it smaller, so one foot. So it's chained and it changes proportionally. If you don't want to change it proportionally, you can click on the unlock aspect ratio and then change the other side to your wish. But I would suggest that you change it proportionally. Now for the Mac users, the material dialog box would look a little different and I'm going to show it to you in the next video. Finally, if you click on the home button, it redirects to in model, which means these are the various materials that are loaded in your scene. So these are the actual materials that are loaded in your scene and you can see those by clicking on the home button. And if you want to increase the thumbnail size, if yours is too small, click here, which is details and change it to extra large or large. I'm going to leave it at large. Now let's say there are some materials which you don't use. I'm going to delete some. Maybe delete this. You can see that I'm using the select tool to delete stuff in SketchUp. And then you can click here and click on purge unused. So that will delete any materials which are not part of your scene. So I hope that gives you an idea of materials. We're going to be using it quite a bit in our scenes along with the V-Ray material asset editor as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. All right, Mac users, welcome back to yet another video. Now I'm going to switch on the materials window and I'm going to be explaining the materials dialog box in Mac, which is slightly different from the Windows version. So you can press B on your keyboard to activate the materials window, which would show up on the right. Or you can also go to Windows and switch on materials here as well. So this is our main material editor in SketchUp and you can toggle between the various tabs in this window. So we have the colors tab, which contains various crayon colors. And you don't really find this in the material editor in Windows version of SketchUp. So this is pretty cool for the Mac interface. And we also have the brick icon here, which contains the main materials in your scene. So SketchUp comes preloaded with a library, which contains various materials from different categories. Now to apply a material, I'm going to quickly draw a rectangle and also divide it. Alright, so to apply a material, you can select the material and it would switch to the bucket tool and then you can simply click on a face to apply the material. I'm going to switch back to colors and then select the color of my choice and apply the material on my face. 
So there's different tabs for colors, but I prefer the crayon color tab, which looks pretty neat as well. Now, if I go back to the brick icon, you can see that this is the last material which I applied. So if I click on the home button here, you can see that in the bottom, we've added this material. So the home button simply indicates that these are the various materials which are part of your scene. The other materials which you see are actually part of Somele's 2D figure. Now, for example, if I add another color, and if I go back to my home materials, you can see that the blue is the newly added material. And if you want to edit any of these materials, you can select the material, click on color and click on edit. And it would switch to the edit mode. And here you can change the size of the texture, reduce opacity and more. You can also increase the size of the material box in case the materials aren't showing up on top. Finally, if you're using V-Ray for SketchUp and you want to show the V-Ray toolbars, you can go to view, click on tool palette and then switch these on one by one. And once you switch them on, you can simply dock it to the left here and one below the other. So we're not going to be using the Mac version of SketchUp, but the V-Ray user interface and the functions are similar both in Windows and Mac as well. Alright, so that was a quick intro to the materials for all the Mac users out there. I hope you guys found this useful. If you'd like me to create any additional tutorials which you would find useful with SketchUp for Mac, feel free to comment in the discussion box below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now in this video, we're going to learn how to use the push-pull tool and finally create some 3D in our scene. So to activate the push-pull tool, you can go to our main toolbar here, a drawing toolbar and click on the push tool. Or you can press P on your keyboard to activate the push-pull tool. So now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to start exporting these boxes up. So you can just simply click, left click and release and then start dragging it on top. And now you can give a height. So I'm going to give a height of say 15 feet and then press enter. You can also simply click release and click again to give a height based on your discretion. Or you could give it with a certain height in mind. So let's say 20 feet for this grass lawn, which is, seems pretty tall. That's two floors. 10 feet is each floor for a building typically in India. And I'm sure in most other countries as well. And now if I click here, release my mouse button you can see that i can only drag it till here so the offset is limited to this height but once i click here again i can drag it on top so there are some quirks in push pulling but it's a fun tool and you can create some really cool models using the push pull tool now let's say you're dragging this face and you gave the wrong measurement so i'm going to give in 10 feet and then i realized i need to give only 5 feet so now before you click anywhere else, now if you want to overwrite the previous value, all you need to do is type in the value again, which is 5 feet, and then press enter. So it overwrites the previous value of 10 feet, and then you have your model at 5 feet. And if you again accidentally click on the wrong face, and you don't want to push this, either click on the select tool, or you can also press the escape tool. So that's a quick video into using the push tool and i've created something abstract and awesome in sketchup i hope you created the same don't try to be a perfectionist right off the bat play around with the tools get used to it and then slowly perfection comes as you keep getting better so that was a quick look into the basic tools and now in the next video we're going to learn how to create our first room in sketchup and decorate our room so i'll see you guys in the next video cheers Hey guys, now before we jump into the modeling of our room, we need to save this model, which is super important. And I forgot to mention that in the previous video. So go to file and click on save if you're not saved the file at all. Or you can click on save as as well if you want to create a new copy of your file. So I'm going to click on save. And now I'm going to browse to my directory where I need to save this file. And I'm going to give a name for this. So I'm just going to call it abstract 3D art. And now you can save your file in any version. That's the best part about SketchUp, which I really appreciate. Because in other software, especially in Revit, 
You can't really save it in a lower version. But SketchUp gives you the option to save it in a lower version. And if your teammate or your employees are working with another version of SketchUp, you can simply click on that version and click on save. I'm going to leave it in the default SketchUp model and then click on save. Now, if you want to make a copy of this, you can go to file, save as, change the name and click on save again. Or you can also go to file, click on save as, copy as. And then you can see that it automatically puts a number to it, which is abstract 3D art one. And just notice what happens on top. We have the name as abstract 3D art, but if I click on save, it's going to remain the same and it will not take this name. So if I click on save, you can see that remains as abstract 3D art. And if I open my folder, we have two files. So file save has copy as simply keeps an history of the updates in your SketchUp file. And it's a good idea if you have multiple changes in your model. Simply do a file save as copy as and it would create a copy of your main file and you can always open that file in case the main file crashes or comes up with errors. So I hope you found this video useful. In the next video, we're going to start modeling our room. Let's get started. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now in this video, we're going to be setting up our scenes or also known as camera views. And then we're going to change the view mode to palette projection, which is also a ortho mode. And finally, we're going to export JPEGs out of our plans and elevations. It's super simple to do. So let's get started. So to create a scene in SketchUp, you need to activate the default ray. And in the bottom of the default ray, we have something called scenes. So scenes basically is the camera view in SketchUp. And it's super important to have your scene set up right from the beginning before you get into modeling. So I'm going to create my scene by clicking on the add scene button or the plus button here. So this would create a camera view. Now let's say I orbit and move to another side. And I want to go back to that original camera view. All I need to do is click on scene one here on the top left and it would go back to the scene view. So each time you click on plus, it would always create a tab on the top here. Now I'm going to set up my plans and elevation views. So to do that, I need to switch from my perspective view to something called palette projection. So to do that, go to camera and click on parallel projection. So essentially a parallel projection mode is a three dimensional space, like what you can see here, but the lines in the three dimensional space are always parallel together. So you can see that this line is parallel to this line and this line is parallel to this line. Whereas in perspective mode, you have a three point perspective where these lines actually converge to a vanishing point in space. We learn more about perspective and parallel projection generally in drawing courses and also in architectural school and other artistic courses. It's something super interesting. So I would definitely recommend you guys to give it a read. So now we're going to go to our parallel projection mode. And now we need to set up a plan view. So to set up a plan view, go to camera, click on standard views and click on top. So this is our plan view. And now we need to create a scene for our plan view. So I'm going to create a new scene by clicking on the plus button here. And we have created our scene. I would encourage you guys to also rename the scene. So you can right click here and click on rename. And I'm going to call this top view. So now you can switch between scenes as well. So if I go to scene one, it switches back to our perspective view mode. If I click on top view, it switches to our top view. You can also switch on the shadows to give it more of a cool effect. So go to view and click on shadows. And if you want to adjust the settings in the shadows, you can go to your shadows dialog box here in the default ray, and then adjust the settings accordingly. Once you've adjusted the settings, it's super important to update the scene. So right click and click on update. Now, if you don't update the scene, I haven't clicked on update yet. And if I go back to top view, it removes those settings and goes back to the original scene settings. So always make sure as soon as you make any changes that you update the scene. So I'm going to update the scene again. Let me just go to shadows again, just check where the shadows are. 
All right, I'm happy with this and I can update. Now, if your system is slow and if your shadows are on, it's going to start hanging your system. So it's a good idea to switch off shadows after you've updated the settings. So I'm going to update the view as well. Just zoom out and zoom in so that it's center of the screen and then switch off the shadows and then update the view. All right, I can delete Sumele for now because we don't need her in this scene. So this is our plan view. And now we can create our front view. So to create our front view, all we need to do is go to camera, click on standard views and click on front. So this is our front view. And I'm going to create another scene. So right click here and click on add scene. So there's two ways to add scenes. You can either right click here or you can go to scenes here and click on the plus button. So I'm going to rename this, call this front scene or front view. Click on update. Now you don't notice that I gave a shortcut for palette projection and also top view. The reason is when I'm designing a space for a client in when I'm doing an interior design project, it's super simple for me to go to the plan view by, by simply pressing Alt W to switch to palette projection and then pressing Alt T to go to the plan view. This helps me to model faster, move stuff around easily and also speed up my workflow. So you guys can go ahead and do that as well, where you can change the shortcut to Alt plus W and the top view. If you want to know how to change the shortcut, go to Windows and go to Preferences. Then go to Shortcuts and search for Palette Projection. And then you need to simply type in Alt W and press the plus button here. I've already assigned, but I'm going to press yes anyways. And also make sure you go to Top View and press Alt T. Finally, I also have given a shortcut for the front view. I haven't given it, so it's going to be Alt N F. And then finally press OK. So now I can switch between perspective and palette projection mode. Go to the front view, the top view, super fast. Now we need to export these views. So go to your top view. I want to export it with the shadows. So go view, shadows. And then to export, simply go to file, export, and click on 2D graphic. Now we need to give a name for this. I'm going to keep it as abstract art 3D art. Call this top view. And place it in the directory of your choice. You can also change the format. So mine is a JPEG format. And in SketchUp Pro, you have the option to, to save it as a PDF, EPS file, bitmap, JPEG, TIFF, PNG, and also AutoCAD. I will be showing this later in the main course. For now, I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Check the options. In case you want to increase the size, you can do so here as well. I'm going to use the use view size. Press OK and then click on export. I'm also going to go to front view. Go to shadows. You can change the shadow settings a bit. You need to understand from where the shadows are falling. So this is a north. And right now, it's set up to fall from the morning sun. So I'm going to click on this again. Set it up like this. Switch on the shadows. And that should be fine. Alright. Once you're happy with the scene, go to File. Click on Export 2D Graphic. And change this to the front view. Let's check out our exports. So congratulations. You've just created your first two images of a SketchUp. I'm super proud of you all. And I hope you found the process super simple. In the next few videos, we're going to learn how to create a room and use these simple techniques to create an awesome interior design. So I'll see you guys in the next few videos. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking about the importance of groups and why you need to model each and everything in SketchUp with groups. Let's go. So let's create a new SketchUp file. Go to File and click on New. Alright, so Mele is back. So now we need to create two rectangles and then push them out just so that I can show you the difference. So I'm going to make my first rectangle and then my second rectangle. 
And now I need to give a height or an extrusion. So I'm going to use the push pull tool, select the face, press P on your keyboard to activate the push pull tool and give a height of say five feet. This one as well. And let's make one of these boxes a group. So to make it a group, you can triple click on the face and it would select all the faces and edges in this object. And now you can right click and click on make group. All right, so we have one object which is a group and one object which is not a group. Now the reason why we create groups in SketchUp is because of something called stickiness. So as you can see, we have this object here and if I try to move this, so I'm going to press M on my keyboard to activate the move tool without anything selected. Now if I click on this edge point and start moving, you can see that I move only that edge point and not the entire object. But in this case, it's a group. So if I click on move tool, and if I click here to select the group, I can move the entire entity. So that's one of the main differences. Now let's say I make a box here, which is connected to this object, and I'm going to give a thickness again. Similarly, I'm going to make another box here, and give a thickness here. Now, since this is a group, and if I move this, it's not really stuck to this face or this new box. It's a separate entity and I can move it around wherever I like. And if I try to move this, so I'm gonna select some faces and edges of this box. And now if I try moving this, you can see that it's stuck. So this is called stickiness, where if it's not a group and I make something attached to this face, it's always going to get stuck to that face. So always get into the habit of creating groups and then placing them together. This helps a lot and it would definitely ease your modeling workflow going forward. Now here's a quick tip to make groups super fast in SketchUp and that's by assigning a shortcut G to make groups. So you're going to do that by going to Windows, going to Preferences, clicking on shortcuts and search for make. So we have make group in the bottom here. I'm going to add a shortcut G and click on plus. So I've already assigned it to make group, click on yes. In your case, it may have been assigned to make components. I would suggest that you reassign it to make groups because we generally use more groups in our models than components, especially when it comes to interior design. So click on yes and press OK. So now to make groups, all you need to do is make your rectangle, double click on the face to select the faces and edges, and then simply press G on your keyboard to make it a group. So now it is a separate group. Now if I enter this group, you can see that the rest of the area gets grayed out and we have a bounding box here, and then we have a face inside. So this helps me model only whatever is inside this group. So I'm gonna just push this out. So we have another group. Now I'm going to switch on something called Outliner in our default tray. If it doesn't show up in your default tray, you can go to Windows, Default tray and switch it on here. Or you can right click on the default tray, click on Manage Trays, select the default tray and switch on Outliner. So what Outliner does is it gives a name or it details out a hierarchy of your groups. So we have one group here, we have another group, and then we have one more group here. You can also have a group within a group, which is called a nested group. Now let's say, for example, you want to nest this group inside this group. So to do that, you need to select this group, press Control X, and then you need to enter this group. So now you can see that we are inside this group because of this bounding box. And to enter the group, you need to double click. After you enter the group, go to Edit and click on Paste in Place. So as soon as I paste it in place, you can see that this group, which is this, is now under the main group. So we have a nested group within the main group. I will be showing you instances of where we use nested groups, components, and more in the main course. So that is a quick tutorial into groups. I would highly recommend you guys to make everything in groups from here on out. And I will be showing it to you shortly when we start modeling our room in SketchUp. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.
Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. In this video, we're going to learn how to use the move tool. And we're also going to learn how to create multiple copies or arrays using the move tool. So to activate the move tool, you can click on the move icon in your drawing toolbar. Or you can press M on your keyboard to activate the move tool. So as soon as you activate the move tool, you can click on the group you want to move. Make sure you click on a group and not any face or edge. You can move a face and edge which I will show to you shortly. So to move a group, you simply need to click and then you can either move it in the red axis, green axis, or even in the blue axis. So I'm just gonna move it this way. So go ahead and try using the move tool to move stuff around. Now, if you wanna move it locked to the red axis, you can click once to move this, and then you can snap it to the red axis by pressing the right arrow key. And now it snaps to that axis. So even if I try it hovering over this side, it always snaps to the red axis. You can also move it by a particular distance. So as you can see, in the bottom right corner, the distance changes. And so now I'm going to type in 25 feet and press enter. So it's moved by 25 feet. Now, if you want to make a copy in SketchUp, you can select the group, press M on your keyboard to activate the move tool. And now you can press the control key once. Make sure to not press and hold. Simply press and release and it adds that plus icon to your move icon. And now you can click once, move it along the green axis. You can lock it to the green axis as well and place it at around 25 feet. So that makes a copy. I'm going to show it to you again. Select the group. Press M on your keyboard to activate the move tool and then press control on your keyboard. So now you can click and make a copy. Now, if you want to make multiple copies in SketchUp or multiply by 10 times, all you need to do is press M to activate the move tool. Again, press control. Make sure to press and release and not press and hold. And then click once. Click on the second point to place it and then type in your value. So I'm going to type in X and then press 10 and then press enter. So that's copied it by 10 times. Now let's say you want to copy it only five times. Now without pressing anywhere, not even the escape tool or anything, in mid action, I'm going to press X, five and enter. So you can always switch if you're given the wrong value. So that's to copy 10 times. Now let's say you want to copy it to a certain distance and divide that distance equally by five or 10 times. So I'm going to Select this group, press M, then press Control. I'm going to place it here. And now if I type in divide by, say, 6, and then press Enter, it divides the distance from this edge to this edge by 6 and equally spaces out your group. So that was a quick tip into using the groups. Now you can see that when I'm orbiting, it sort of clips this plane. And I'm sure a lot of students are going to face this problem. So the best way to resolve this is by simply going to camera and switching to perspective mode. So if you switch to perspective mode, you're going to avoid that clipping problem in SketchUp. Finally, if you want to edit a group and move only this part of the face, you can enter the group and you need to select only this part of the group. So I've selected only that edge, four edges and the face. Now I'm going to select the move tool, click once, and I'm going to drag it by say two feet. And I've increased that distance by two feet. So that is a quick tutorial into the move tool and how you can copy and make arrays or multiple copies in SketchUp. We will be using it a lot in the course and in the main course. Try it out, get used to it, and it will definitely help you in your workflow. Now in the next video, we're going to learn how to use some particular shortcuts, which I personally use in my own workflow that would definitely help you out. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you the various shortcuts that I personally use in my daily SketchUp workflow. So the number one shortcut that you need to learn is the hide rest of the model shortcut. So we're going to assign the shortcuts first, and then I'm going to show what each of these shortcuts do. So let's go to Windows and go to Preferences. Click on Shortcuts. And the first one you're going to assign is called Hide Rest of the Model. 
type in height and when you go to the bottom you'll find this view slash component edit slash height rest of the model so i've given a shortcut called j if you want to assign a shortcut simply click here press j on your keyboard and click the plus button i've already assigned so this is why this dialog box is showing up i'm going to press yes now the next shortcut is edit slash hide so i've assigned f2 for edit slash hide unhide all which is f4 on your keyboard unhide last is f3 so three shortcuts here and then hide rest the model now the other shortcut which i'm going to use is something called x-ray mode so i've assigned the shortcut y for this you can simply click here press y on your keyboard and press the plus button so apart from these i also use the camera slash parallel projection shortcut which is alt w and the front view which is alt f and finally the top view which is alt plus t you need to press alt t and then it will show up here and make sure to click on plus so once you've added all of your shortcuts in case you want to use it in the future you can export these shortcuts out it's called a sketchup data file and then you can re-import it in other systems or in future versions so once you're done with this, press OK. So let's start with the first shortcut, which is hide rest of the model. Now, for example, if I want to edit a group here, and I want to edit the edge face or this face, the face here, right? You need to press J on your keyboard. So what that does is it hides the rest of the model and it only shows the group which is active, as you can see with this bounding box. So now if I make something here, maybe a rectangle, or something like this, an abstract shape. And if I press escape, you can see that I've added it to the side face of this group. So it helps when you have a lot of groups inside your model and you need to edit a specific model or group. Now, if I enter this group and press J, I can't really edit that side face. So this helps in hiding the rest of the model. It simply toggles between the main model and the group which is active. So you can start using the J tool as well, hide rest of the model tool. And next, which I can use is something called the X-ray mode. Sometimes in SketchUp, it's difficult to select certain faces and edges. So we use the X-ray mode. So if I press Y on my keyboard, you can see it's a wireframe mode. And now you can see the back part of the faces as well. So now you can enter the group and you can also select the back part faces and the below face or whatever it is. It helps when you're trying to move stuff decorating your room and if there are too many things in your space then it would be difficult to move stuff so use the x-ray mode to see things which are inside your model all these shortcuts would make more sense once we start modeling our room the next shortcut is hide and unhide so if i want to hide this and edit it later i can press f2 so it's hidden and if you want to see what is hidden in your model you can go to view and click on hidden objects so you can see that this mesh means that this model is hidden. I'm going to not show the hidden objects. And if I want to unhide using the keyboard shortcut, the last object which I hid was this box. So I can press F3 to unhide the last object. And if I hide a lot of stuff and I want to show all the objects which I've hidden, you can press F4. So that would unhide all of your items. So these are the main shortcuts that I personally use. And apart from that, like I mentioned in the previous few videos, if you want to go to your plan view, the best way is by going to your parallel projection and then which is Alt W and top view, which is Alt T. And you can also switch between perspective and parallel projection in the top view as well. There's also the front view. So this helps in modeling faster. This workflow is generally used in 3ds Max, but in 3ds Max, you generally have four windows, whereas in SketchUp, you can only work with one viewport so i hope you found this video useful and in the next video we're going to finally start creating our room so i'll see you guys in the next video cheers hey guys welcome back to yet another video now in this video i'm going to show you how to use the tape measure tool to measure stuff create guides and also scale in sketchup so to activate the tape measure tool you can press t on your keyboard and that would activate the tape measure icon or you can click on the tape measure tool in your drawing toolbar. So now I'm going to create some guidelines or guide points in SketchUp.
So to create your guidelines, you simply need to click on the edge and then drag out a guideline. So this is a guideline. And if you want to create a guide point, you need to click on the edge of your group and that would create a guide point line. The main difference is the guidelines are infinite lines, like how you have infinite lines in AutoCAD, whereas the guide points are simply just a dash line to maybe refer something out. So the guide point lines come from the edge points or end points in a group, whereas the guidelines come from the edges themselves. So I can create multiple guidelines. Now if you want to create a guideline at a particular distance, what you need to do is click on the edge of the group and then you can scroll on top. You can maybe press the top arrow key to snap it to the blue axis and then give in your value, which is going to be three feet. So I've given a guideline, which is three feet. And now I can create referring these guide points and create something else as well. I'm going to press Ctrl Z. Now, before I show you how to scale stuff in CHOP, these guidelines, if there are a lot of them, it would be annoying to continue modeling in SketchUp with all of these on. So to switch this off, you can simply go to view and switch this off. So if you click on guides, it turns off all the guides. If you go to view and click on guides again, it turns them back on. If you want to delete them from your SketchUp window, simply go to edit and click on delete guides. That would delete all the guides in your SketchUp window. So you can do that towards the end once you've done all the modeling. Now I'm going to show you how to scale in SketchUp using the tape measure tool. So if I press T on my keyboard, you can see that it comes along with a plus dash symbol. So if I press control on my keyboard, you can see that disappears and it toggles. So if I make it disappear, it's simply the tape measure tool. Now with this tool, without the plus button, I can scale stuff in SketchUp. So how do you scale stuff? Now it's super important that you need to know what you want to scale. If you want to scale the entire model, you can simply use a reference point. Now let's say for example, this is a wall which is at seven feet, eight inches, but maybe in real life, it's actually 15 feet. And the entire model will scale to this reference measurement, which you're going to take. So I'm going to click once, and then I'm going to click the second time at this point, which is seven feet, eight inches. And now I'm going to type in my value without pressing escape or any other key. So I'm going to type in 15 feet or 15 apostrophe and press enter. So now it would ask you if you want to resize the model, Note that all the components would get resized as well. So click on yes. And now you can see that everything is resized. So if I want to measure in SketchUp, I can click once. And now without clicking anywhere, I'm just going to hover on the second point. So now you can see that it's scaled to 15 feet. So I'm going to undo that. Now let's say you want to scale only this group and not the rest of the groups. So if you want to scale only this group, you need to simply enter the group. And now we are inside this group, as you can see the bounding box. Now I'm going to select the whole thing. And I'm going to press T again. But you can notice that it's got that plus symbol there. So I'm going to press control again to deactivate that plus symbol. And then simply click once over to the top to see the measurements It's four and a half feet. Maybe I need a smaller room or a smaller box, whatever it is. So I'm going to click the second time. And then I'm going to type in my value, which is going to be two feet and then press enter. After you're done pressing enter, make sure to click yes. So that's the active group, which is going to get resized to two feet. So let's check that out. I'm going to go back to the select tool, click outside the group to exit the group, and then measure the size. So we can see that it's two feet. So that was a quick introduction to the tape measure tool. Once again, to reiterate, you can measure stuff by clicking once and simply just hovering on the second point to find out the measurement, you don't need to really click. As soon as you hover on the second point, you can notice the measurement. The second is simply creating guidelines and guide points. And finally, the third is scaling stuff in SketchUp. So I hope that helped you out. And we will be using the tape measure tool a lot in our modeling process to check stuff, give reference lines and more. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now with this video, I'm going to show you how to use the rotate tool. 
So the rotate tool works similar to the move tool in terms of its functions, but obviously it rotates stuff in SketchUp. So to activate the rotate tool, you can press Q on your keyboard to rotate in SketchUp, or you can click on the rotate tool in your drawing toolbar. Now what I would suggest is that you select the group first and then press the rotate tool or the Q key on your keyboard to know which group or component you want to rotate. So if you want to rotate this, you need to first click the base point from where you want to rotate from. So you want to randomly click somewhere here in space. After you click, you need to click the second point which is going to be our reference point. So I'm going to click this as our reference point and I'm simply going to rotate it to 90 degrees. Now you can also rotate and copy like how we have move and copy. So I'm going to click once again at the point of rotation and then the second would be the reference point which I want to rotate from and now if I press control key on my keyboard it makes a copy so I can make a copy this way as well and you can also rotate and make multiple number of copies so I'm going to maybe select this now I can also draw it at a certain distance so I'm going to use the line as the reference I generally use the line more than the tape measure tool to draw reference lines but it's your call so I'm going to give this let's say 30 feet and now I can select this group press Q to activate the rotate tool select the end point and then select the reference point you want to rotate from and then you need to click on the second point to place it and after you place it before you click anywhere or press the escape key type in X into 20 and press enter so that makes a array of copies of your group and if you want to adjust the value since 20 doesn't close the loop without pressing anywhere again I'm just going to type in 23 press enter and that would close the loop so that's pretty cool where we created a circle shape you can also divide stuff you now for example I'm going to copy this now and rotate it from the center place it here and then I'm going to divide by say 10 press enter and that would divide it into a semicircle equally spaced out. So that's the rotate tool, a pretty handy tool when it comes to rotating stuff in SketchUp. I also want to bring to your attention that you can rotate with the move tool. So if I press M on my keyboard and if I hover over any group, you can see that we have these plus points. So with these points here, you can simply click them and then rotate in SketchUp. So you don't really need to use the rotate tool all the time but in certain stages you might require to use the rotate tool. You can simply use the move tool and click on these anchor points to rotate in SketchUp. So that was a quick introduction into rotate tool in SketchUp. In the next video we're going to learn how to use components in SketchUp. See you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now in this video, I'm going to show you the importance of creating components in SketchUp. Now in the previous video, we made the circle, but each of these objects here are actually groups. So if I enter a group and edit one of these, you can see that it is independent of the rest of them. So I need to go to each of these groups and make that change. And that's a big pain if you are modeling in SketchUp. And if there are thousands and thousands of groups, which are pretty much the same, but since they are not a component, you need to go to each of them and edit them out. So that's the importance of components where if you copy the same component and make this loop, and if you edit one, it would affect the rest of it as well. So let's quickly do that to help you understand components better. So I'm going to copy this group to the side here. So I'm going to use the move tool, press control on my keyboard to make a copy and click once that's created a copy now this is a group right so I need to make it a component simply right click and click on make component so this would make it a component you can give a name for this component you can call this typical box you can give a description if you like I generally don't give a description and you can leave the rest of the components as is we don't really use any of these much in SketchUp unless you want to export it into an IFC, but that's for a later stage where we're going to talk about BIM and more about BIM modeling with SketchUp. But that's not for now. We keep that for later. So we only need to give a name. So I'm going to keep it as typical box and then simply click on create.
So now I'm going to create the same loop. So let's make a line again. Maybe at 20 feet this time. All right. So to rotate this, select the group, press Q on your keyboard to activate the rotate tool. Press the top arrow key so that it snaps to the top axis. And now you need to click the base point, which you're going to rotate from. Click the reference point. You can maybe click even this end point as the reference point. Press Ctrl on your keyboard to activate the copy mode in rotate tool. And click on the end point to make a copy. Now you can type in X into 14. Press enter. Maybe X15. And we are done. Now since this is a component, if I enter the group, and press P on my keyboard to activate the push tool, click once and drag it on top. You can see that the rest of the components change as well. So components comes in handy when you're modeling something which is similar in the scene. For example, maybe railings, stair steps, stairs, some same furniture, maybe like dining table chairs, and so on. It's important to make them a component. If you don't make them a component, you'll end up wasting a lot of time, energy, and it's not really efficient when it comes to modeling in SketchUp. So I hope you found this video useful. Do test out component in SketchUp, and we will learn how to use components later in the main course as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now in this video, you're gonna learn how to use the scale tool which is another important modeling tool in SketchUp. And it's one of the last tools that we're going to be learning and then we'll jump into creating our room. So to activate the scale tool, you can go to your drawing tool by here and click on scale or the shortcut for the scale tool is S. So you can press S on your key to activate the scale tool. So you can click on any group to apply the scale function on. So I'm going to click here to apply it on this group. And now we can start scaling it using these edge points. So if you want to scale this proportionally, you need to click on the corner edge points. So I'm going to click here and now you can see that this box starts scaling uniformly. And if I click on the points in the middle, you can scale each of these edges. So you can scale it this way, you can scale it on top, you can scale it at the bottom as well. So we generally use scale tool along with the push pull tool to resize objects, increase the size of certain objects, scale them proportionally, and a lot more. So that's a quick function using scale where you can model stuff and also resize stuff. Now if you want to scale them proportionally, or if you want to scale them by say 50% or 100%, you can select the group and then press S on your keyboard to activate the select tool. Now if you click on the corner point, you can start dragging them to scale it proportionally. And now in the bottom right corner, you can see an option called scale. So I'm going to scale this down to half of it. So I'm going to type in 0.5 and press enter. So that would scale it to 50% of the original size. And if I want to scale this back to the original size, I'm going to simply type in 2. So that would bring it back. So there is a little math that is required to using the scale tool if you want to proportionally scale everything. But I generally use it simply to stretch it and model faster. There's another way you can use the scale tool to make objects to a certain size. Now if I enter this group, and let's say I want to scale this entire group, so I'm going to select the entire thing. I'm going to press S on my keyboard to activate the scale tool. And now if I click on this grip points here, I can give a size for this object in this axis. So let's say I type in three feet, press enter. So that's given a size of three feet. Now let's measure this out and you can see that it's 3 feet. Similarly, you can scale it this way as well. And let's say I'm going to give 3 feet here as well. So now it's 3 feet here as well. And finally, let's make it a cube. So press S on your keyboard to activate the scale tool. Click on this midpoint here. And now I'm going to type in 3 feet. And now we have our cube. So that is a quick tutorial into the scale tool. We use it quite a lot in our modeling as well. And we'll be showing it to you in the coming few videos when we start modeling our room. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.
all right guys so we've come to the end of this video now it's not quite the end because we learn how to model and render this amazing bedroom now if you want access to the full course head to the link below or you would find it somewhere here hopefully in the future there's a lot more content on sketchup and vray on my website which is sketchupguru.com so do check it out now i'll see you guys in the future videos subscribe and like if you haven't yet and uh, yeah cheers